Alright, what's up? Back with some more tricks for Cookie Run Kingdom. First up is going to be landmarks. Let's have a look at them. So I've built a variety of landmarks within my kingdom. I've got the Ferris Wheel over here at level 2. I've got the Gumball still at level 1. Honestly, bit of a waste of time upgrading the Ferris Wheel, but there you go. Flower Garden still at level 1. Definitely should have done that up there. But Compass is far too rare, so it's going to stay at level 1. They've got the Clock Tower for pro minus produ lower production time. We've got the Lion Statue for more attack. I don't think there's anything down here. Nope. We've got the Dark Slow Castle for damage resist. And we've got the Haunted House for crit chance. Now there are a few I've not built yet, such as the snow globe. This is the one I'd want to build next for plus 5%. It is quite heavy on those rare resources though. We've got the dessert tower for stamina recharge for being low. We've got the star candy observatory for more coins in battle. And we've got the industrial adventure for the balloon expedition for the croissant zeppelin. And we also have the Molten Magma Mountain for lower time for trading. Now these six, I would not recommend getting them at the start. They are not essential. If any of them are essential, it's the observatory for more coins. But if you did the pre-registration, then the music box does exactly that. Even though it can't be upgraded, but it's still there. The, the Ferris wheel and the gumball, okay, they, they look really good. They're going to give you a soul, but it's one soul every 24 hours, and each upgrade only lowers it by one hour, and those rare resources are so rare. I do not recommend building these at the start unless you are paying to play. If you're paying to play and you have loads of those resources spare and want to go ham, then buy all these or by all means, but definitely go for the stuff that is getting you... Anything that's helping you in battle, the attack, the defense, the crit chance, the damage resist, the health, and also the TikTok tower. There is a reason why I'm going to say that one's also essential. We'll come to that in a minute. But these six right here, I would say, are non-essential. Once you have cleared maybe around World 8 or at least World 7 and you've got, you're quite comfortable with your team, maybe start investing in these. But for what they give you for the price you pay... I do cannot recommend these right now. And I have built two of them. I have built the stuff that gives me souls. And you're sometimes you get common souls and rare souls. If they gave epic souls every single time for 24 hours, I would definitely say invest. But they don't. So I, I wholeheartedly can't say build these straight away. Hold off on them. Wait till you've got an abundance of those resources. And then and space within your kingdom. And then perhaps invest in them. That's my honest opinion. If you if you think that I'm wrong in that, leave a comment in b below. Tell me why you think they're good to build early. But yeah, my opinion is hold off on these six. Get the others first. Don't necessarily need to upgrade them, but get them in your kingdom first for that passive ability. So as I said, TikTok Tower, absolutely one of the essential ones that I would get for tip number eight, experience gathering. This is because it helps with the houses. What do the houses give? XP material. Yes, they are the super basic XP material, but you're getting a lot. This is production time down. So each house at the moment is level 5. I recommend getting your houses to level 5 if you can. Anything high and uses those super rare resources, I don't think it's worth it. We're getting 17 per house every hour. We could go to the mileage shop. They have XP jar to level 7. They give 3,000 XP. But look at this. 88,000 out of 100,000. I would have to get four of those. That's 400 mileage. Mileage is difficult to get. I do not recommend buying the mileage from you using your mileage to buy XP materials. Because let's have a look at this. One house. And look at that. There's more. That's plus four now already. And I only went around my kingdom and clicked a few things. It, it, it incredibly quick and the production time is going down definitely get this up not too high i'm sitting at level four that's about right but as i said it's not worth upgrading the house 17 for every hour right there and i definitely think it's worth it now you might be asking me why is this worth it more this oh, those are only a few xp they're 14 xp only but let's get the old calculator out so looking at the calculations, 17 I can get every hour. Each experience is worth 14. So every hour, each house is giving me 238 experience. I have 16 houses at level 5. That's 3,808 experience every hour. 
that totally outweighs the one the 100 mileage it would cost me for 3000 and the mileage does not come so easily which is why the cookie run houses are much better value especially when paired with that tiktok tower so i cannot recommend that tiktok tower enough especially when the gain you get from the cookie houses is so great all right so and on top of that when we run stages we're also be going to be getting um experience for just finishing the stage so right here i'm going to run the very end stage just to see like you know demonstrate what we kind of get from all this from the very last stage currently now what you probably will have seen on the youtubes that on the official channel they're releasing a hard mode that's because people have blasted through the story mode and now are probably like, ooh, don't know what to do. So now they've increased even more challenges. So I'm definitely gonna do some videos on that. But there you go, the witch is down. Only had 10 seconds to spare. Ugh, that's still, but there you go. That's five extra right there. It's not great, but it's an extra bit. All right, tip number nine is team building. Now team building will vary from person to person depending on how much your time you're investing, how much money you're gonna be investing, but I would say that you're looking for two good at the front, two strong characters at the front. Either a charge and a defense is the best if you can have it. And then in the middle, two strong. And then at the back, you want at least one healer per team or perhaps a healer and a supporter. So choose what you have and what you've pulled. You know, you've, it does vary from person to person and it's hard to say this is what you need to do. If you want some like big, big tips to see, look at the rankings. Look what people are using. Now, I've been running this team currently because this was the team at one point, which was the team. But I've just noticed there, Vampire. Why is Vampire being used? Let's have a look at the skill. Turns into a bat and attacks the farthest enemy. Drinks and gains HP. Oh my god, that's going to demolish any backline healers, any backline support, which will totally disable your team's ability to restore energy. This is why Vampire is really good. Now, this sounds like something I should probably get intend into investing. Let's see what I could get up to now. Level 31, not going to quite cut it, so I'm probably not going to go for it just yet. But I'm going to have a look at what else we've got. All right, my... My Dark Choco is there. Not going to replace Dark Choco, I don't think. But I could get the skill up to level 12 as well. I have got quite a lot of that stuff I've not used. But this is one of the ways to look at your team. See what you've got and see what you need. Like what other people are using and try and copy it if you can. If not, try and just look at the skills and then build your team around the skills. The other thing to look at is these like bonds. These bonds are passive. They apply across the whole map, the whole, all your teams. So if you've got some cookies that need upgrading, see if you can benefit from upgrading them by seeing if they're going to give you any extra bonds and any extra passive boosts. I mean, look at all this now. Some of it I've got, some of it I don't, but it's definitely worth having a look at. All right, tip 10 is treasures. This is linked with team building it, and it makes a massive difference. So treasures like Old Pilgrim Scroll, the Grim Looking Scythe, Squishy Jelly Watch, and Gatekeeper Ghost Horn, all top tier treasures. Now the three top tier treasures are the scroll, uh, the scroll the watch and the tail. If you do not have the scroll because it is an epic, the scythe is a good uh, re good alternative. The lollipop is okay, but it only affects the cookie with the highest attack. The ice cream is also okay, but th those, like the the lollipop, the ice cream, they all like, they have countdown timers on them. Whereas the, the scroll, the scythe, and the jelly watch and the horn do not they are passive they're constantly boosted and two of those are common which means if you pull on these drawers for the treasures there's a high percentage chance you're gonna get them which makes them amazingly effective all right the the scroll is a 1.25 percent chance so it is a bit iffy but they are they will make a massive difference to your team and if you're desperate you can also exchange for some tickets Tip 11, Kingdom Expanding. Now, expanding the kingdom com encompasses many different things. If you're talking about kingdom level, I would say after about five level 515, you're going to be starting to rank up 
the Kingdom XP. And it gets, it's a massive amount of XP. It's jumps on into like, uh, it's 100,000 once you start getting to episode 6. And eventually it goes to 1.4 million when you get into episode 8. It is intense. And it doesn't, I think from Kingdom 20, you're getting like two levels per cookie. You can level your cookie twice per level of Kingdom from 20. Now, Kingdom expanding within itself, these, I would expand your Kingdom as much as possible per castle level. Now, I don't have enough of these compasses, so I am not even bothering, even considering going to cookie level 8. I am expanding every bit I can to go to before even investing in Cookie Castle level 8. There's a lot of extra buildings that can be built and territories plus another further 10 parts of territory open up and for 700,000. You will not have enough space. If you are designing a kingdom like this, like I do with every little bit, like all the, the little bits and bobs everywhere, expand your ideas first. <laughs> Wait, not your ideas. Well, expand your ideas as well, but expand your territory first. So you're planning ahead of how much space, extra space you're going to need to put all the buildings in. Now, if you're not interested in designing your kingdom with different areas to it, like or snow area, candy area and stuff like that, cram everything together, cram all the landmarks together, cram all your houses together, and then just cram all your production together this will make it going through your production refilling your production exceptionally quick all right and getting that xp from all the houses exceptionally quick if you want to design your kingdom then there's no real answer about how you should do it and it's all personal choice so if you're if you're designing your kingdom as a wow i want everybody to look at it and be super cool and be like woo wee then Expand your kingdom for sure before expanding your castle, but it does take time. A bonus tip is the pudding event. Let's just have a quick look at the pudding event. Overall, this this event is quite simple, but I think the use the custard cookies skill a certain number of times can be a little bit daunting and a bit tedious. So I'm going to try and tell you my way of doing it. So I'm currently grinding it out on 7-9 um, for the chance to get those um, epic attack uh, toppings as well. So this is my setup right here. I've got two healers and two strongish characters. Now, I'm going to run the first one on auto mode. I'm just going to let it go standard speed and I'm going to just see how many times we get this skill out. Just on auto mode. There's one. Now, I don't do this on auto mode because it's, um, it's not as effective. Uh, but I'm just running on auto mode. If you want to run it on auto mode, perhaps don't bring too many strong characters. Perhaps bring like one medium strength character and one high defense character. Or one that's at least quite tanky to take most of the damage at the front. Um, but yeah, up to now we're about halfway through, actually two thirds of the way through the stage. Only use the skill four times. Unless my maths is wrong, but I'm pretty sure we've only used the skill four times. All on automatic. Now, obviously, if you're not going to be able to look at your phone during all these things, then, you know, it is what it is. But uh, five times in total, it was used. Five skills. So if you can't use, like, constantly look at your phone, then auto is okay. But there's five skills on auto. This time, I'm going to turn auto off. And I'm just going to constantly pretty much spam the pudding skill. And also use Herb and Pomegranate. Uh, Pomegranate's not really ranked up. It's just that she's there and so I decided to use it. But I'm constantly spamming Pudding. So I'm already up to three. And, well, we're about a third of the way through. And I, so I would say it's looking pretty good. And because we don't use any massive skills, especially Espressos, the stages last much longer. There's four. Also, Pudding skill can be activated in between the enemies. Uh, stages. So while we're running to between the stages, if it charges, you can actually activate it, which is really handy, especially for this skill. 
anything that's a support skill, such as puddings or herbs or pomegranates, can be active between stages. But obviously, herbs is not great. But pomegranates is good because it gives a uh, constant heal over time. Although it does give attack up, so it's better to do it just before. But already we've got eight, and we're just... Oh, is this the boss? Oh, this is the end... Well, not really boss, but this is the end of the stage. We have eight on the counter. Can we reach... There? There's nine. All right, we've got 11 seconds. It's going quite quickly. The Jelly Watch is really helping here with a constant thing. Oh, no. Oh, one. Can we get an extra one? Oh, there we go. The round was over, but we got an extra one out there. Ten skills. That's double the amount, which really cuts about the time you've got to grind out with pudding to get those extra uh, 350 usages out. Now, my pudding, I put all... Um, these swift chocolates on. They're all S, so they're not too difficult to get. I have one up here some that I should have equipped earlier, really. But I'm just going to come throw that on just so that ch that skill charges up that little bit quicker. Now, so if you do have the chance to put these on, do not have to rank them up. Most of these are unranked. But I'm going to get rid of these two because I'm not interested in those now. I'm all I'm interested in those red boys. But that is going to be it for these tips. If you want any more tips, leave them on in the description. No, in the comments. And I'll try and put them in a video next time. Until then, bye bye.